we're talking about a severe threat to social order, social peace, not in, in British Columbia. They have green-lighted Enbridge's Northern Gangway Pipeline proposal with 209 conditions. So it's official. The war is on. This could clearly become a major issue of the 2015 federal election, Tuesday's federal approval of the Northern Gateway Pipeline. Northern Gateway is a 1,200-kilometer pipeline. It would carry more than 525,000 barrels of oil per day from Bruderheim, Alberta to Kitimat, B.C. From there, oil would be shipped to markets in Asia. Sun News contributor Lori Goldstein joins us with more here in studio. Lori, this has been in front of, at least in front of the, the, the Energy Review Panel since 2010. Finally, last year, it got conditional approval by the board 209 conditions. So you hear a lot of people say Harper and the right-wing conspiracy are sort of letting the evil business interests run roughshod over the country. But I say 209 conditions. We're also going to see that BC has to approve it. And they have five whopping conditions uh, that are in front of them. And there's probably going to be a number of challenges. So while it seems like this is going to happen, there's still huge, huge resistance and a, and a very high threshold uh, for Enbridge to, to hit. Oh, yeah. No, th I think yesterday the, the cabinet approval was a step in a long process. It really started 10 years ago when Enbridge started talking about this pipeline. Uh, but ultimately, there'll be two things. I think the legal battles will be significant, and that will be because of the Aboriginal claims. Uh, the courts have taken a very uh, strong view that, that Aboriginal rights have to be respected and have to be respected based on the understandings of when treaties, treaties were made. And then the other thing in B.C. is there aren't any treaties. So it's, it's going to, there's going to be a big hassle there. But ultimately, as you said at the top, this will be a political issue. We now know that in the election in 2015, the Conservatives will favor this project, and uh, Mr. Trudeau and the Liberals and Mr. Mulcair and the NDP will be against it. So there'll be that um, a fight going on. So, it could uh, be a referendum on that very issue, depending on how the election's framed. Yeah, they're, 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 it could be. There will, I think the opponents will work for a referendum in B.C. That's not, that's not binding. It means that the B.C. government has to do certain things. But the premier out there has talked about five conditions, the biggest of which is they want their slice of, of the pie, right? Um, if this doesn't go through, though, they'll be very unhappy provinces. Alberta will be very unhappy, and Saskatchewan will be very uh, unhappy. And, and I think uh, one of the things we need to realize is this, is this is a proxy fight about the oil sands. That's what the real fight here, as far as people like Elizabeth May is concerned, as far as... Who want to um, shut it down. Uh, yeah, yeah. In other, words, in other words, angels could come down from heaven and guarantee this thing was going to be totally safe and would make us all billionaires. And people like, like May and, and the various environmental groups would still be opposed. See, because when we look at what's on the screen right now, world leading practices for spill response, for prevention, the fact that we have uh, double barreled tankers now rather than single so that if there's a leak in, in one, of the, one of them, it doesn't just spill out everywhere. Uh, the government has said we want this to be top notch in the world. And, and I think that's fine. I think we should have a very high threshold. The folks are demanding a high threshold. These companies will pay the freight. They should pay the freight. Done. But to your point, I don't think that's going to be enough. I don't think yeah, this is no. about environmental safety because we're already seeing we're at a very high threshold, 200 conditions placed against them. They're still going to find a problem with that, even if you make them jump all the hurdles. Yeah, well, what I would say, and we just saw the, the five conditions from the, the B.C. government, and a lot of the 209 conditions are conditions once you start building it and that you have to meet. And remember, even the federal government said in approving it, they said to Enbridge, uh, you guys are going to have to make a deal with the aboriginals. Now, they've made deals with a lot of the aboriginal uh, bands they along the way. They say 60%. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, and, then, but, and really, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a number. It's what is the number in terms of economic benefits uh, that is going to satisfy a lot of these opponents. Now, that's where it splits. But because, do all reserves think that way? No, Some exactly. do think in terms of that math. Others, no dice. Well, well, or, remember, if you're looking at tactics and strategy, you have to separate the two. If your strategy is to stop it, or if it's to get the best deal, then the tactics of disruption, as the chief said, the war is on, those work. Those work up until the time you decide, well, what's my ultimate strategy here? Do I want to stop this thing, or do I want to get the best deal I can? In the interim, you, of course, you, you do the, you know, we're going to have the protests, we're going to have the, the protesters being chained, yada, yada, yada. Great point on strategy. Here's a clip from one Aboriginal group in B.C., and I want your take on this.
Harper is illegal. Canada is illegal. The province and the federal government is illegal because they don't have jurisdiction in our people's territory because we've never signed no treaties. Okay, so that seems like that's a complete no dice argument. Stephen Harper is illegal. Canada is illegal. This is Turtle Island. Done. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any deal there. Even though they could share in the wealth, they don't seem interested in well, it. Well, the serious thing, I think you have to sort of look inside their thinking. And, and the problem there, it may sound silly to us, but the courts may well look at it that way. The courts have been very supportive of that, Aboriginal rights on these kinds of issues. And the court, I mean, she says Canada's illegal. That What she's saying is we don't recognize the federal government's authority to put this on what we consider to be our land. And that's a serious argument. And believe me, Enbridge and the federal government are going to have to mount serious arguments um, against it. What I would say overall to people like that, though, is, is look, we all know that Aboriginal communities are having a tough time. You look at any, any parameter of, 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 and you know, it's, it's because of poverty, um, education, drug abuse. Suicide, suicide. rates. And, and we, we need to put a lot of money into making that better. Where do they think that money is going to come from? Where do Canadians think? What's the reason Canada has recovered from the global recession uh, uh, better than almost any other developed country? One, we had a better banking system. Uh, uh, but two, we had things that the world wanted and needs right through that recession. We had oil and natural gas. And, and it seems to me Canada's one of those rare countries that where we have this movement to basically stab ourselves economically in the throat. The hysteria over pipelines, which is, pipelines are not a new technology. In Barack Obama's administration, in his administration, the U.S. has put down enough gas and oil pipeline to more than encircle the earth. Uh, now, he doesn't do Keystone because he's a hypocrite and he wants to be thought of as a green president. But, I mean, our resources are oil, natural gas. That's a great part of the riches of our country. We have to get it to market. If we can't get it to market, if Northern Gateway goes down, if Obama won't approve Keystone XL, and if we can't get Energy East approved, um, we're going to suffer economically. All Canadians will suffer economically. Larry, we're out of time. Thanks for your analysis. One of the things I write about a lot, I really care about Aboriginal prosperity, and I think this is one of the paths to get there. I think it's very unfortunate that, that the activists just don't Some are, agree. A lot of tribes are signing deals. Very good point.